Hello friends, welcome back to our RWM series. I am Dr. Nikita, your mentor for NEET PG FMG. Hope you all are doing well. So I am back with my another topic in RWM that is congenital hyperbilirubinemia. And you must be wondering why are we discussing this topic? Because as you know, we run this RWM series that is revised with mentor where I get queries from the students and I make those topics easy to remember for them. So this was one of the table received from the students that they have difficulty in remembering this table on congenital hyperbilirubinemia, specifically these unconjugated hyperbilirubinemias. So I thought I shall discuss this topic. Actually, this is a very easy table to remember if you understand the concepts. We shall come back to this table later on. First, let us see what is included in congenital hyperbilirubinemia. What all syndromes are included? So, in congenital hyperbilirubinemias, we have unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So, to remember the mnemonic is, remember that doctor is conjugated. That is DR is conjugated, doctor is conjugated. So, Dubin-Johnson and Rota syndrome are conjugated hyperbilirubinemias. Your rest of them then, that is Krigler-Najjar, type 1, type 2 and Gilbert, these become unconjugated hyperbilirubinemias. So, Krigler-Najjar and Gilbert are unconjugated, doctor is conjugated. So, Dubin-Johnson and Rota's, these are conjugated hyperbilirubinemias. So this is a very very frequently asked basic question but repeated many times. Please remember this that Dubin Johnson and Rotors are conjugated hyperbilirubinemias. Now coming to unconjugated hyperbilirubinemias. So krigler najjar you have type 1 and you have type 2. So type 1 was the one which was discovered earlier and type 2 was discovered later. So, krigler najjar 1, the disease which comes to notice first is the one which is more severe generally. So, krigler najjar 1 would be more severe than krigler najjar type 2. Now, krigler najjar type 2 was discovered or was seen in patients by a person named Arias. So, it is also called as Arias syndrome. So, Arias syndrome is nothing but another name for Krigler Najjar type 2. So, Arias is type 2. 1 is the one which was discovered earlier. So, it is the most severe form. So, the most severe unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia becomes Krigler Najjar type 1. Why is it most severe now? It is most severe because you have an enzyme which makes conjugated bilirubin, it converts unconjugated to conjugated, that enzyme is absent, it is completely absent. So in krigler najjar type 1, you have absent UDP glucuronyl transferase activity, that is UGT1A1 activity is absent. So you get absent activity in krigler najjar type one that is why it is most severe. So, will phenobarbitone be effective in treating Krigler Najjar type 1? Now, what does phenobarbitone do? Phenobarbitone converts unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin by inducing the enzyme that is UDP glucuronyl transferase. Now, when you give phenobarbitone to the patient, there is no UGT enzyme present on which this phenobarbitone can act. So phenobarbitone will not be effective in the management of regular Najjar type 1 where the enzyme on which phenobarbitone acts is completely absent. So phenobarbitone is not effective in regular Najjar type 1. Now since it is most severe, so it will have very high levels of bilirubin. Very high levels of bilirubin, it will cross the blood-brain barrier. When it crosses the blood-brain barrier bilirubin, it will cause Kernic Terrace. So you will see Kernic Terrace in krigler najjar type 1. Now krigler najjar type 2, similar to krigler najjar type 1, but the less severe form. Why is it less severe? 
because the enzyme that is UGT 1A1 enzyme is not absent but it is markedly reduced in Krikler Najar type 2. So you have the activity which is markedly reduced that is it is less than 10% of the normal in Krikler Najar type 2. So will phenobarbitone act here? Yes, it will act because the enzyme is present and phenobarbitone will induce the enzyme. So the bilirubin levels will come down when you will give phenobarbitone in Krikler Najar type 2. Now how about Gilbert? Gilbert is also unconjugated bilirubin. So the enzyme UTT1 A1 activity is reduced. It is 10 to 33 percent of normal. So this is the most benign form of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Kernicterus is generally not seen here. It is the most benign form. So Gilbert syndrome is the most common. Now Gilbert which is the most benign is the most common. So most benign disease is the most common. So Gilbert is most common. Now coming to the conjugated hyperbilirubinemia that is Dubin-Johnson and Rotus. Dubin-Johnson what is the defect? So what happens is you have bilirubin in the blood. This is unconjugated bilirubin which is taken up by the hepatocyte that is the liver cell. This liver cell conjugates unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated by UTP glucuronyl transferase. And then this conjugated bilirubin is transported to the bile ducts. So what is the defect in Dubin-Johnson syndrome is, in Dubin-Johnson syndrome, the protein here that is MRP2, multidrug resistant protein 2, which transports this bilirubin from the hepatocyte to the bile duct, there is a defect in this protein. So that is why what happens is the conjugated bilirubin accumulates in the liver cells. So it and that causes black liver jaundice. Rotor syndrome is another example of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So this was about congenital hyperbilirubinemia. Now coming to the table that we had as a query. Now this is a table of inherited unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia that is Krigler Najar 1, Krigler Najar 2 and Gilbert. We have seen that Krigler Najar 2 is also called as ADR syndrome. Now Krigler Najar 1, the activity of the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase it is absent. In type 2 it is markedly reduced, in type 3 it is reduced. So serum bilirubin in Krigler Najar type 1 would be the maximum because it is most severe. So 20 to 50, Krigler Najar less than 20, Gilbert would be less than 3. It is the most benign form. So phenobarbital effect, no effect in Krigler Najar type 1 because the enzyme is absent. There will be reduction in type 2 and reduction in Gilbert. In Gilbert, the bilirubin even comes back to normal. What is the outcome? Since this is most severe, Krigler Najar 1, it will have kernicterus. Type 2 is less severe, it is usually benign, kernicterus is rare and Gilbert is the most benign and it is the most common form. While Krigler Najar is a rare form, Gilbert is the most common form. So, I hope I have made this table on the topic of congenital hyperbilirubinemia. Easy for you to remember. If you have any queries, do post the queries on the link below which I am sharing for a RWM that is revised with mentor series. Thank you. Keep studying, keep revising and keep winning.